Hello everybody, welcome to Sightline. As part of 16 days activism against gender-based violence campaign, today we have invited Mrs. Kaori Ishikawa, head of the United Nations Population Fund in Mongolia. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Sure, thank you. Um, let's start from the concept of the violence itself. We hear a lot about violence, right? And But how do you specifically define this Mm -hmm. gender-based violence. Yeah, thank you very much for asking. And uh, gender-based violence is a very broad concept. And the United Nations, we cover various violence issues, such as domestic violence mm -hmm. that UNFP is working on, um, sexual harassment right. at the workplace, in public space, uh, sexual violence, mm -hmm. rapes, um, also, you know, harassment. Uh, mm. Nowadays, in the different part of the world, cyber harassment is mm -hmm. becoming an uh, issue for the against young girls. Mm -hmm. So the gender-based violence is the violence made uh, based on the the gender differences between men or women or mm -hmm. socially defined. For instance, the violence against gay person can be also uh, violence against boys and the men. Uh, so it has to be something to do with identity. Mm -hmm. So gender-based violence also uh, about the power relations mm -hmm. you know, in society that uh, vulnerable people are targeted mm -hmm. because of their uh, social defined uh, role. Um, the particularly so gender-based violence that we are tackling now mm -hmm. is based on understanding that the women have less power than the men. Mm, and right. Um, the most uh, common uh, violence uh, in Mongolia mm. is violence against women mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. But we all know that violence is everywhere, yes. everywhere, right? But in what exactly society sectors do we usually face violence? Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, that the, um, the most uh, common violence is uh, domestic violence mm -hmm. uh, made by the men against the wife mm, or right. intimate partners mm -hmm. in, in Mongolia. We know that uh, from the uh, tw 2017 um, nationwide survey, mm -hmm. the first ever uh, nationwide survey conducted on gender-based violence shows that the domestic violence is the um, most common form of, of violence. And uh, uh, every one out of two women in Mongolia mm -hmm. experience some kind of uh, violence, for instance, psychological mm -hmm. uh, violence, or uh, physical violence, mm -hmm. it can be harassment, verbal uh, abuse, they're all you know, related to violence. Mm -hmm. And one out of three women in Mongolia experience also violence in each year, mm -hmm. which is 380,000 women. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot of women right. experiencing this. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about, today actually we talk here uh, in our studio talk about gender-based violence, right? So that means that men also in that at risk, right? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, let's talk about male population mm -hmm. now. So, uh, what category of male population mm -hmm. at risk uh, mm -hmm. and suffer violence? Um, so again, this is about power relations. So boys mm -hmm. are more uh, vulnerable to the violence than the uh, grown-up. Uh, I can also say that uh, uh, the person with a disability is a vulnerable population. Mm. So perhaps the, uh, the men with a disability are more uh, likely foot of getting violence mm -hmm. by the other population. And another category is, uh, you know, the men with the different uh, sexual orientation, mm -hmm. gay person or LGBTI mm -hmm. society. A uh, few years ago, I think there was an outcry in Mongolia mm -hmm. about the violence against these minority groups. Mm. And what about the solutions? We talk about violence, about, um, I don't know, the difficulties, uh, why people also uh, become violated, right? Mm -hmm. But still, are there any solutions, concrete solutions mm -hmm. to solve this problem in Mongolia? Mm -hmm. First is a legal framework, and in 2017, the Mongolian government first time criminalized that uh, domestic violence issues. Before it was uh, uh, violence happening at, 
at home, meaning mm. that uh, it's some personal issue. Yeah, right. So that the government authority didn't have any control, uh, control mm -hmm. over this violence and have to leave it to the family, you know, mm -hmm. family issues, or mm -hmm. maybe there are people who, are, who can intervene with the res uh, resolution. But now, since 2017, because of the uh, revised law on domestic violence, mm -hmm. it's no excuse. Mm -hmm. If you take any uh, violence, as if somebody is walking in the street and hits you, and it, the police come and arrest you. It's right. Same thing will happen mm -hmm. if something like that is happening at home. And uh, second is also data collection. Mm -hmm. So Mongolia has done that already in 2018. Uh, if you don't have a data, it's very hard to uh, mm. plan your program, and it's very hard to, to count, uh, count right. and it's hard to budget mm -hmm. uh, related to the service. And uh, um, in two days, we'll be launching this report on economic impact right. on the intimate partner mm -hmm. uh, in Mongolia. We found out through this study that uh, nearly uh, $250 million mm -hmm. is wasted <laughs> wow. um, because of this consequence of the violence in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the government and the citizen in Mongolia has a uh, reason to mm -hmm. combat domestic mm -hmm. violence. Mm -hmm. and other forms of violence in Mongolia. But um, I think that you worked in many other countries, right? So you are able to compare the violence situation mm -hmm. in Mongolia. So, and how do you see um, how our government really pays attention to this problem mm -hmm. in comparison with other countries? Mm -hmm. Globally, that uh, one out of three women experience mm -hmm. domestic violence, which is uh, if you look at the statistics, it may be a little bit lower than uh, Mongolia because I said that earlier, that one out of two women in Mongolia experienced this, uh, uh, some kind of right. violence. Yes. So that's one thing. Um, but coming to this, uh, how Mongolian government or Mongolian people are doing, mm -hmm. uh, comparing other countries, I think you're on the track. All right. uh, this is because that there is a law, which many countries do not have. And second, there is a data, mm -hmm. and there is also service delivery, and many countries in the world do not have a service up to mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, there is also will from the government mm -hmm. that this is a serious issue. Uh, I can see that the more and more uh, people in Mongolia raising concerns against violence against women and children, even the, uh, uh, as a result of the uh, parliamentary election uh -huh. in July, mm -hmm. the, uh, some member of parliament form the group specifically on this issue mm -hmm. and uh, committee, mm -hmm, committee right. on the violence uh, mm -hmm. against the women and uh, also children mm -hmm. so i think that there is a momentum mm -hmm. that the government is uh, taking government and also this the representative of uh, uh, people mm -hmm. the parliamentarians taking a strong stand on this this is a very good start um, mm -hmm. Violence against uh, children and women is a very complex issue and uh, uh, it can be solved overnight and uh, this is why that we are doing this campaign every year, 16 days uh, mm -hmm. campaign against women and children, domestic violence. Um, the, everybody has to be mobilized and sensitized. This is uh, the act and ac acceptable, mm -hmm. not tolerated. Right. Uh, and as a union, we stand on this principle. Mm -hmm. What about the ad adult, adult people? How should we educate them to prevent from the violence? Are there any solutions for mm -hmm. that? I think there are many ways. Uh, this is like what we are doing uh, through the campaign. Uh, and some other countries do the uh, TV drama. Mm -hmm. This is something mm -hmm. that the UNFP is very keen to do wow. it for the future. Okay. Because you know that uh, when you are introducing that through the entertainment, yeah. people will understand. And uh, accept it. Accept it right. easily. And mm -hmm. then uh, as you pointed out in the beginning, maybe the concept may be difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe people think that this is acceptable. But if you show it from the... Um, woman's perspective or victim's perspective, right. more people will understand this is not acceptable and they will probably uh, try to change the behavior. Mm -hmm. And uh, involving uh, influencer, you know, these uh, leaders, like this time, the prime minister of Mongolia himself, you know, committed himself wow. to uh, stop this violence, mm -hmm. calling the people, the Mongolian right. people to stop violence. That's really very powerful. Yeah. But also, uh, Mongolia has many artists and uh, you know actors and right. uh, comedians. Mm. 
uh, musicians, these are people that yourself also, <laughs> influential right. person, mm -hmm. uh, can join our effort to mm -hmm. do this, to change people's mentality. So uh, during this pandemic, uh, have you noticed any increase of uh, violent behavior? Mm -hmm. So this is already reported everywhere and in civil society organization uh, raising concern and government also acknowledged that the, uh, the spikes in violence mm -hmm. uh, towards the uh, women and the children. And we are receiving the reports from police and our one-stop service center mm -hmm. in the last 10 days after the lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, nearly 1,500 uh, people mm -hmm. use the service, either the phone or the uh, visiting a service center. And uh, what we did was also, uh, we wanted to make sure uh, that uh, this service center will be open for those who really need service, because in the lockdown, our mobility is very limited. Right. We mm -hmm. can move. Yes. And uh, basically, that the, if you are a survivor or victim of do domestic violence, there is no way to go. Right. And uh, you're living with a perpetrator. Mm -hmm. I think government put the uh, precautionary measure to stop, uh, you know, uh, sale of alcohol. That's something that's very innovative right. for me. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, this cannot continue. It's not a sustainable solution. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I respect the Mongolian government, uh, you know, okay. decisions, but right. it's, it, you cannot uh, stop that say forever. Because it's again, again, freedom. <laughs> yes. yes, it's people's choice. Mm -hmm. uh, let's again talk about uh, violence itself. So um, why do you think uh, violence itself occur in the society? Mm -hmm. Are there any specific reasons for that? Um, uh, for the gender-based violence, basically the inequality uh, between the men and women is uh, the, the root cause, mm -hmm. but it can be a trigger point, maybe uh, because of the stress or economic stress. Like in the, we have recently conducted a rapid assessment mm -hmm. on uh, uh, gender-based violence in uh, COVID-19 situation, right. mm -hmm. and um, the one of the findings is that basically economic stress mm -hmm. and then the, the family living in a very confined place, the, the kids not going to school, a lot of pressure on the household to the mm -hmm. mother and father. Right. Uh, these are the you know, trigger points. Maybe alcohol is one thing, mm -hmm. but the main uh, root cause is inequality between different people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've mentioned in the very beginning uh, that you are organizing United Nations uh, Population Fund organizes 16 days mm -hmm. uh, activism mm -hmm. against gender-based um, violence, right? So could you please tell us about this event itself? Mm -hmm. Are there any specific reasons for this choice, 16 days? Mm -hmm. So 16 days uh, activism campaign against gender-based violence right. is a global campaign. Mm -hmm. It's happening all around the country and um, in the world. Mm -hmm. It starts on the 25th of November, which is the International Day of Elimination of uh, Violence Against mm -hmm. Women. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's ending on the 10th of December, mm -hmm. which is International Human Rights Day. Mm -hmm. So these are from the 25th to the uh, 10th of December, they are different kind of uh, human rights related day. Mm -hmm. For instance, today mm -hmm. we are uh, commemorating International Day on HIV Mm. Is. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a series of campaigns and we continue to combat uh, violence against women and children. In Mongolia, uh, the theme is uh, no more mm -hmm. and we'll be working yeah. on the uh, domestic violence. Enough and is enough. Yes. I heard. Yes, <laughs> this is international campaign. But in Mongolia, we come together, international organization, UN organization, government, uh, also civil society organization mm -hmm. from Mongolian community and the private sector. Mm -hmm. We come together and agree on the themes and um, uh, this year we decided to have a no more, that's our national campaign Slowly. theme, uh, no more violence in home and public place and also in, in, every way. <laughs> in the workplace, <laughs> right. everywhere. Uh -huh. So that the different organizations working in this area can come together and work on a common message. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, this uh, violence, uh, GBV happens everywhere. Right. At home, workplace, yes. and the public space. We wanted to address and we, we wanted to all the uh, partners come together. 
-hmm. And uh, this is becoming a, um, really like a mobi community mobilization. Mm -hmm. We started the first day with the Prime Minister's statement, a mm -hmm. statement from the uh, Minister of Labor Social Protections, mm -hmm. the UN resident coordinator, right. all the UN agencies working in Mongolia come together mm -hmm. to address this concern because it has an impact on every aspect. FAO, first time, a food and agriculture organization, first time joined us because they, uh, they are working with the herder woman mm. and affects the herder woman. Uh -huh. And they have an outreach to this herder community, which is 30% uh, of the Mongolian population. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really powerful movement. And I'm really glad that the, all the uh, partner came together, including uh, private sector like Oyutolgo in, in the Rio Tinto. Mm -hmm. They have this uh, special pay program for the domestic violence survivors, they have like five pay leave. Mm. So they are just, just introducing the ideas um, to the other private sector company in Mongolia. So mm -hmm. this is like, you know, common, common joint work that we are very excited that we can do this e this year. Right. During this pandemic, how do you organize it online or in what form? Yes, that, this is a challenge because, mm -hmm. you know, um, this is activism. We have a, a we are working with also different uh, government partners like national police agencies. Mm -hmm. They are very mobile, so mm -hmm. we count on them. And uh, last year we had a billboard and a lot of campaign messages through TV and uh, um, also you know billboard, bus station. Mm -hmm. We can do that because people are not mo moving. So this year the uh, police force went to the different apartment and left the leaflets with mm -hmm. the hotline numbers mm -hmm. or they went to the supermarket because oh. supermarkets are allowed to open right. during the lo lockdown. Mm -hmm. So we need to be a little bit creative, but uh, I'm really glad that Mongolian people are very creative <laughs> and <laughs> solution oriented. So we come up with a solution to reach other people mm -hmm. even in lockdown. Mm, I see. Well, thank you very much for your uh, coming to our studio and we will hope that the violence will decrease all around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. So today we are talked about the violence, the gender-based violence and the ways to solve them with the United Nations Population Fund, head of the United Nations Population Fund, Mrs. Kaori Shikawa. We will see you next time and until that, please stay safe and stay at home. Thank you.